Hello everyone. Welcome again to another session of economics. In our earlier sessions, we have already gone through the definition, scope and nature of economics as a subject, the theory of demand and the theory of supply. So, picking up from there, in this session, we will proceed with the nature and behavior of the consumer. We will begin the session with some basic terms related to this topic that we are also going to use in our forthcoming sessions. The first such term is utility. Utility is the satisfaction of wants and needs obtained from the consumption or the use of goods and services. The terms utility and satisfaction are used interchangeably in economics. So utility can be regarded as a quantification of the satisfaction of wants and needs which are achieved through the consumption of goods and services. In principle, utility measurement can take one of the two forms. The first form is the cardinal form which is based on numerical values such as 1, 2, 3 etc. And the second form is the ordinal form which is based on rankings such as first, second, third and so on. The unit of measurement for utility is utils. Utility can be of various types. One form of utility is the marginal utility. Marginal utility is the additional utility which is obtained from the consumption of an additional unit of a commodity. For example, after eating one ice cream cone, if we eat another cone of ice cream, we will get additional satisfaction or we can say additional utility. So the increment of our utility can be called the marginal utility. It is specified as the change in total utility divided by the change in quantity. Another type of utility is the total utility. The sum of the utilities of all the commodities consumed at a particular time is known as total utility. Total utility is most often used in consumer demand theory to indicate how much overall satisfaction someone obtains from a given activity or the consumption of a given amount of a commodity. Now let us take an example to clarify these terms. If a person eats 5 oranges at a time, the sum of the utilities of all the 5 oranges consumed will be the total utility for that person. This term should be contrasted with the related term marginal utility. The additional satisfaction obtained on eating the sixth orange after eating all of the five oranges will be the marginal utility as it will be derived from the consumption of one additional unit of commodity that is orange in this question. Another related term is the cardinal utility. Cardinal utility is the measurement of satisfaction using numerical values such as 1, 2, 3 etc. that are comparable and based on a benchmark or a scale. It is assumed that utility is a quantifiable entity and a person can express the satisfaction derived from the consumption of a commodity in quantitative terms. Economist Marshall has provided cardinal measurement of utility according to which the higher the price paid by the consumer for a commodity, higher will be the utility of that commodity and vice versa. That is, lower the price paid by the consumer for the commodity, lower will be its utility. Thus, price can be considered as a measure of the utility of a commodity. It is also assumed that a consumer is capable of assigning a number to a commodity representing the amount of utility associated with it. Now there are certain assumptions which are to be made while assessing the cardinal utility of a commodity. First of all, the consumer is considered to be a rational human being. Secondly, the consumer possesses the knowledge of the market and of the price of the commodity. Thirdly. The taste of the consumer doesn't change. And last but not the least, the marginal utility of the money must remain constant throughout the consumption of the commodity. We have already discussed the concept of marginal utility. 
A related concept is the law of diminishing marginal utility. This law was formulated by the economist H. H. Gossen. Therefore, this law is also known as Gossen's first law. Later, this law was perfected by another economist, Professor Marshall. The law of diminishing marginal utility states that as we consume more and more units of a commodity, the additional utility derived from its consumption diminishes. In other words, we can say that the consumer consumes more of a commodity, the total utility will increase but at a decreasing rate. The applicability of the law of diminishing marginal utility also requires certain assumptions to be made. Firstly, various units of the good are homogeneous in nature. Secondly, there is no time gap between the consumption of different units of the commodity. Thirdly, the consumer is a rational being. And fourthly, taste, preferences and fashion remain unchanged. Let us take an example to clarify this concept. Suppose a consumer consumes 5 bottles of a cold drink. The utility or we can say satisfaction derived from the consumption of the 5th bottle after drinking 4 bottles will be less as compared to the utility or satisfaction derived from the consumption of 4th bottle after drinking the first 3 bottles. Similarly, it will increase for third bottle and further for second. Now this is what has been illustrated in this table given here. As we can see in the data, the total utility is increasing as the number of bottles consumed increases, but the marginal utility decreases gradually. We have graphically represented the same conclusions here in the form of a graph which will make it easier to understand. The number of bottles of the cold drink consumed have been plotted on the x axis and the marginal utility derived on the y axis. The blue line here shows the diminishing marginal utility with increase in the number of bottles. The next subtopic is the consumer surplus. The term consumer surplus stands for the difference between what a consumer is ready to pay for a good or a service and what the consumer actually pays. Thus, consumer surplus can also be considered as the difference between the marginal utility and the market price of a commodity. Another related term is consumer equilibrium. Consumer equilibrium is the condition that exists when the last rupee spent on one good or service provides the same marginal utility as the last rupee spent on every other good. In consumer equilibrium, the income is allocated between the purchase of different goods in such a way that the level of utility cannot be increased. That is. Utility maximization has been achieved in this case. A consumer will be in equilibrium when the consumer surplus is equal to zero or the marginal utility of the commodity is equal to the commodity's market price. The graph given here shows the consumer equilibrium. We can see in the graph that as the consumption increases, the marginal utility decreases. The point where the purple line of the marginal utility intersects the yellow line of the market price, that is the marginal utility of the commodity is equal to the market price, that point is the consumer equilibrium point shown here in the graph as the point E. Our next subtopic is the indifference curve. This approach was proposed by Hicks and Allen. An indifference curve can be defined as the locus of all those combinations of any two goods which provide the consumer with the same level of satisfaction. Thus, the consumer is indifferent about these combinations. The table given here is an indifferent schedule. Various combinations of a good X and good Y are listed here which consists of different units of X and Y. 
these combinations are named as a b c d e for example combination a consists of one unit of good x and 18 units of good y combination b consists of two units of x and 13 units of y c consists of three units of x plus nine units of y combination d consists of four units of x plus six units of y and combination e consists of five units of x plus four units of y but as we can see in the table the satisfaction derived by the consumer by all of these combinations which consists of different units of x and y are the same as denoted by s so the consumer will remain indifferent to these combinations thus we can see that this schedule is as per indifference approach the graph shown here is an indifference curve in the indifference schedule that we are discussing there are five combinations of two goods x and y and all these combinations are achieved by combining various number of units of x and y we already discussed that the consumer is indifferent to these combinations we can explain it in further detail now as per the combinations to get one more unit of x the consumer prefers to give up five units of y so the gain in utility of one additional unit of x is exactly compensated to the consumer by the loss of five units of y thus the total level of satisfaction from the combination of 1x plus 18y which is mentioned as combination a in the schedule is equal to the combination of 2x plus 13y which is mentioned as combination b in the schedule similarly the total utility or the level of satisfaction from 2x plus 13y or combination b is equal to the combination of 3 units of x plus 9 units of y or we can say combination c and so on since all these combinations give the same level of satisfaction to the consumer they are also known as iso utility combinations to apply indifference curve analysis we have to make certain assumptions firstly a consumer is assumed to buy any two goods in the combinations secondly a consumer can rank the alternative combinations and compare their level of satisfaction and he prefers a combination which will provide a higher level of satisfaction thirdly it is assumed that the utility can be measured in ordinal numbers but not in cardinal measurements fourthly the consumer is a rational being and his or her choices are transitive in nature fifthly the consumer behavior is assumed to be constant throughout the analysis and lastly the indifference curve analysis assumes diminishing marginal rate of substitution the indifference curve analysis possesses certain characteristics the most important which are mentioned here the indifference curve must slope downwards from left to right the indifference curve must be convex to the origin and no two indifference curves should intersect each other another related term is the indifference map indifference map is a group of indifference curves for two commodities showing different levels of satisfaction in the indifference map it should be clearly understood that a higher indifference curve denotes higher level of satisfaction and a lower indifference curve represents lower level of satisfaction so we can say that the curve's height is proportional to the level of satisfaction of the consumer the figure shown here is the indifference map where different curves such as ic ic1 ic2 ic3 uh, depict different level of satisfaction which is proportional to their heights so the higher curve such as this one depicts higher level of satisfaction and the curves below it show lower level of satisfaction as compared to this curve i see our next topic is the budget line 
A budget line shows all the combination of two goods which lie under, on or beyond the purchasing power of the consumer. The two things that are required to draw a budget line are the income of the consumer and the price of the two goods. Let us take an example. Let us assume a consumer has rupees 100 with him. There are two goods available to him to be purchased, X and Y. The price of the goods X and Y are rupees 10 and rupees sorry rupees 20 and rupees 10 respectively. And the consumer has three options of purchasing. First option, he can buy only good X. Second option, he can buy only good Y. And the third option, he can buy some of the units of good X and some of the quantity of good Y. Now let us draw a budget line for this case. So let us plot number of units of good X on the X axis and the number of units of good y on the y axis. Point M on x axis shows the option when the consumer decides to buy only good x and no good y. And point L on y axis shows the option when the consumer decides to buy only good y and no good x. Line LM represents the maximum amounts of good x and y which the consumer can buy within his budget. Line LM is known as the budget line since it represents the various amounts the consumer can buy with his income. It is also known as the price ratio line or simply the price line since its slope represents the ratio of prices of the two goods. OM of good X is equal to OL of good Y. The consumer can't opt for a combination beyond the line HM such as the one shown by point A which he cannot afford. If the consumer selects a combination under the budget line as shown by point B, the consumer's budget will not be utilized fully, that is, whole of the money will not be spent. It brings us again to the term consumer equilibrium that we discussed earlier as well in the session. A consumer is said to be in equilibrium when a consumer gets maximum satisfaction and no more distribution of his or her income is required. The consumer will be in equilibrium if he selects the combination that lies on the indifference curve, which is tangent to the budget line. This position is depicted by the equilibrium point. Have a look at the graph given here. The number of units of good X are plotted on the X axis and the number of units of good Y are plotted on the Y axis. These four curves are the indifference curves differing, differing in their levels of satisfaction which is proportional to their heights. The line LM is the budget line. If the consumer selects the combination depicted by the point C, which is lying on the indifference curve IC3, tangent to the budget line, the consumer will be in equilibrium. Thus, C is the equilibrium point. The consumer gets the maximum possible satisfaction from his given income at point C. At this point, he buys a combination of OX1 of good X and OY1 amount of good Y. Any other possible combination of the two goods will either yield lesser satisfaction or will not be obtainable or affordable at present prices with the given amount of income of the consumer. The fundamental condition of equilibrium is that the marginal rate of substitution of commodity X for commodity Y should be equal to the ratio of prices between the two goods. So, if the price of X is PX and the price of PY, sorry, price of good Y is PY, then we can say that the ratio should be equal to PX divided by PY. So, the session of theory of consumer behavior ends here. Hope you enjoyed it. Please refer to our earlier sessions for clarification on the various terms that we have used in this session. 